Well, thank you everybody for coming out this evening to um, see this body of work, uh, Conjuring, by Charles Suggs. Um, I was first made aware of um, Charles's work at Barry Gallery in the South End, where I saw his um, monotypes and smoke drawings and was really just blown away by the work. And then um, went to do a studio visit with him in the Boston Center for the Arts and saw more of it, and then was just, it was so exciting for me, and I'm so excited to be able to um, invite Charles to, to come here. Now, Charles um, got, and I'm tell you a little bit about Charles, he got his MFA from Boston University in 2020. Y'all remember 2020, mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was quite a mm -hmm. year. And he was named one of five outstanding art school grads by the Boston Globe, one of five, and it's like mm -hmm. so impressive. Um, and he's shown his work in, you know, in Boston and Massachusetts and New England, and he's currently a studio fellow at the Boston Center for the Arts. He's also had public conversation with um, Joel Christian Gill, who's now head of um, the visual, you know, art and the visual image program at BU. So he's he's been doing amazing things. And I also invite you, if you haven't seen his website, to look at his website. We have one animation, you know, here tonight, but he has some stunning animations as well. But we wanted to, for this show, to focus on these amazing smoke drawings. So um, without any further ado, I will uh, let Charles tell us a little bit about the work. And thank you mm. again for coming. All right. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming out and uh, coming to see this. I really appreciate it. And uh, thank you, Danielle, for all your help in getting this up and helping to just lay out everything here. You were a, a big help because I had different, I had, my ideas were like, oh my god, but you came in and made everything make sense and helped to really make it a beautiful show. Thank you. Thank you. Well, um, you know, smoke-wise, I uh, first saw this technique when I went to, South, uh, went to Cape Town, South Africa in 2018, right before I was starting my uh, MFA program at BU. And uh, at the Cape Town National Gallery, I saw the work of Diane Victor, who's a, uh, uh, a printmaker based in Johannesburg. And I was blown away. I was looking at it. I thought it was so amazing because uh, the smoke looked so sensitive and it was so delicate and she was making portraits of uh, 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 people in delicate situations and it fit very well with that and I kept saying, well, you know what, I'm gonna do that but as soon as I get back, I'm gonna try it. <laughs> well, uh, you know, two years later, I still hadn't tried it until 2020 and COVID. And so I was in the house, I was just in my home with uh, nothing else to do and I said, I'm just gonna try it and test a few times, test it with smoke. And after a lot of trial and error and fire, and I just started using it more and more, got more comfortable with it. And now it's my, uh, it's my major, it's my main uh, medium to go to and work with. And, you know, it moves so fast for me. You know, it's just, uh, I'm able to get my ideas down quickly with just one candle on almost any size. And, I can just go in as soon as I, you know, whatever I'm thinking, I can just put it down and go back in and move it away. Uh, you know, just uh, uh, erase what I uh, don't want, add more when I want to. And, uh, you know, it's funny, I'll put down a drawing and I'll measure it out and I'll have everything, you know, things that I want on it. But there's so little control I have over the smoke, uh, the, the drawing is obliterated. So I have to go back and redo everything, but I like that for some reason. And it always gives me something a little different and something that I'm not, you know, that I wasn't really planning for, but then I'm always mostly happy with the result that I get. And I'm always, uh, you know, able to get something new out of it. So it gives me something back in that return. I get to just uh, make something and I'm surprised when I see the final result. So I actually enjoy that. And, uh, you know, the smoke when I'm doing it, I'm, I'm thinking most of the, the figures you'll see here are people that I know, uh, people who are uh, uh, family members, uh, some friends who I may have lost touch with, but, 
you know, that memory, memory to me is like the smoke. Uh, sometimes it fades in and out. It's kind of a, it's kind of ephemeral at times, you know? Sometimes you may forget, and you may forget some, uh, some uh, details of some things. And to me, the smoke seems to uh, have that sense. So I'm drawing things, I'm drawing memories in many ways of people and things. Like, uh, in particular, this one is a memory of my mother. And uh, the position, you know, it, you know, you can argue, no, you know, people who knew my mom would say, that doesn't look like her. But, you know, it's, uh, it is a memory that I have of her. And that was the last time I saw her. They call this one uh, Thanksgiving. That's from Thanksgiving 1976. She died on Thanksgiving morning, 1976. But the last time I saw her was uh, that night before. And she, was, she would always sit in a chair like that. And I remember she'd always curl up and put her head into her knees uh, after a long day. And she would just sit there and rest like that. And that was the last time that I had saw her. And that memory has stuck with me for a long time. You know, it's just still with me to this day. And I always thought about that. And so with this, I was uh, thinking about that and thinking that she was cooking Thanksgiving dinner. And so the stove was part of this. This is the only one with a, another element beside a person. And so this is a, the only one with an object. That's also part of the memory that I have of it. So. Uh, yeah, that's how I work through a lot of these. And there are a lot of uh, memories and memories that I, you know, things that I still feel. You know, not so much the, the actual detail of the people, but my memory of their presence. And that's one of her. And the others are uh, family members, uh, some friends. Uh, events and times that we had together and so the smoke just gives me that that uh, that sense of of a memory that's kind of in and out and plus I just really like using the medium itself because I'm able to just again like I said before move as fast as I think Mm -hmm. So we talked a little bit about um, you having your hand handprint in this piece, mm -hmm. which I think is amazing. Thank it you. has a different sort of record of your experience with the, with the creation of the piece. Mm -hmm. And then again, with the braid here, which mm -hmm. I think is particularly amazing. Is there, is, is this sort of like an evolving kind of thing where you're seeing how can I, you know, keep adding different kinds of effects like that. Particularly I'm asking because I see the hoodie over there and we know mm -hmm. that hoodies have such a charged relationship yes. with society. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I wonder if there's, there's you trying to like see where you can add other records of people's experiences with, mm -hmm. I, I don't want to make too much about it, but oh, racism yeah. and mm -hmm. identity mm -hmm. and all that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, you're right. I, I am, uh, you know, exploring different materials and things to interact with this to get a, a different record of that and uh yeah it, with the uh hoodies a lot the hoodies are my anxiety and experiences of wearing a hoodie particularly this one was really inspired by the memory of 2012 and trayvon martin and uh that one's called worry and it's about the worrying of you know me worried about wearing a hoodie and going out into public with one on, you know, just something as innocuous as a hoodie. But for a person of color, and for a person who, you know, you know, I'm from an inner city, and me walking around with a hoodie may not look like something, you know, that people are, uh, uh, that may have a different uh, feeling about that. So one, two, and uh, the other one there in the frame, those are all like that, that sense of, you know, this fear that some may feel about someone who looked like me wearing a hoodie.
There'll probably be more of those too, a lot of that. And uh, the one with the braids, crown, and uh, you know, I'm not trying to, you know, it's, it's mainly based on, uh, you know, my own feelings. I'm not trying to uh, comment on something that's happening right now, but if something that's happening is similar to the work I'm doing, that, that's fine to me. You know, I, I, I don't want to try and chase that if it's something that's happening now. And, uh, but that one, Crown, uh, I was doing that and I was thinking about, you know, sometimes braids are, <laughs> braids are uh, in school uh, not allowed at some point. And sure enough, just a few weeks ago, one uh, kid in Georgia was suspended from school for wearing his hair in braids like that. And, and uh, you know, I was just thinking, you know, that, and that uh, I named that one Crown because that, uh, you know, there is a such thing called the Crown Act, where you're not supposed to suspend kids from school from wearing their braids like that. And so I had named that one Crown, and when I heard that on the news, that was just like, wow, huh, okay. <laughs> but it just fit right into what I was doing. or something, one of the basketball teams, the girls' basketball teams, that they were told to put their hair in, pon in ponytails or something, even though they were mm -hmm. braids. Mm -hmm. too. That was Massachusetts. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think, to, to you, do you feel like a connection between this work and the illustration work in terms of this work um, being so connected to memory and then those, those other the video work is more about historical memory, and this feels like it's about personal mm -hmm, memory. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I think that there's sort of this, again, that the thread of memory I think, as an overlap. Mm -hmm. um, you know, how do you how do you see that connection for your for yourself, or do you, or would you say these feel more? They feel more separate. I'd say they feel more separate okay. because those are dealing with uh, you know historical subjects yeah. that are. Uh, uh, that are collective that all of us know about, and uh, well, not all, you know, maybe not all of us, but a lot of us do know. And these are my personal recollections, my right. personal memories. So they do, there, there is a feeling of disconnect with them. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. are, we, are we to assume that all the figures are African American? Yes. And so I'm just kind of curious: is there a relationship between you using this medium? Into picking African Americans? You know, only because uh, the memories I'm making of are my personal, my, my closest family members and my closest friends, they happen to be, they happen to be black. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's weird. the smoke itself didn't say that I'm going to use this because I'm doing black people, but more so the fact that I was working from my own memory and my own close connections. And uh, the smoke just fit in because my, you know, my, my, I have something that I want to put down. I can do it so quickly with smoke and I can just really conjure up, as, the, <laughs> as it says, conjure up that, that face and that, uh, the, uh, that image that I want. But it does, at least for me, it makes me think different about the idea mm. of being black, right? Mm. Because it's not just one color. Mm -hmm. you know, it's different shades, it's, it's much more complex. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about your process of getting the smoke down and then maybe the reductive aspect of it too? Oh yeah, yeah, I usually, uh, I'll, I have it up high, either at an angle or completely uh, suspended, usually on two very tall ladders or uh, uh, scaffold, mostly ladders in my place. And then I'll use a candle just to let the uh, smoke rise up onto the surface. And then once it builds up to where I want it in certain places, then I'll go back in with uh, either a soft paintbrush or uh, an eraser, a kneaded eraser, and just pull out the details that I want from it then. And then I'll go back over it again, layer some more smoke, and then spray, <laughs> and then go back in with uh, pulling it out with uh, you know, just until I get the details that I want. And that's usually over a drawing that I've already made. But again, once I put the smoke down, I try to follow the drawing, but that drawing's gone. And so I have to start over again. But that's part of the process. That, that's part of what I like about the process itself. 
does your memory become sharper as you go through the process? Sometimes it's kind of a, it, it's a little sharper, but then sometimes I make stuff up, I find, you know? <laughs> sometimes my memory is, you know, there's maybe some nostalgia, and there's just some, uh, something that I'll see in the smoke, and then I'll want to add some more to it, you know? But, yeah, sometimes things come back to me, you know? There's some things, some little tidbits that I didn't know about, and then it'll come back. so cool about the smoke to me is that it's, it's both it's so dynamic mm -hmm. I mean, it just you can't really fix it it seems like everything in it is either really vulnerable mm -hmm. about to blow away or mm -hmm. incredibly resilient like emerging yeah. out of this kind of nebulous thing that I just always like so moving to see this so I don't know if this is a silly question but is it the dip is the paper is working on paper a different experience mm -hmm. than the canvas and do you make that decision early on for different kind of works end up you know, sort of smaller scale or is a whole different feeling working on paper? Yeah, yeah it is. Paper, uh, well, uh, it, they're really subtle, some of the differences. Sometimes paper is browner, the uh, smoke that'll lay down. Uh, the, uh, and uh, the, just the canvas being more sturdy, especially when I fix it with, uh, I, well, when I, uh, use a gesso or an oil ground, it's really sturdier and it can take more heat. And so I can work on it a little longer. Whereas with paper, I have to move quicker and stop because it'll heat up and I don't want it to just start to combust <coughs> right away. Though well, sometimes it has, and it's, some of those are okay. You know, I didn't put those in here, but they're, they're actually interesting. But uh, there's some subtle differences. Okay. Sometimes, yeah. On some of these I did, yeah. Uh, not all of them. The ones in the frame, well, one of them in the frame I didn't put fixative on at all. And I don't think I have fixative on that one. <laughs> so, be careful. <laughs> I Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> processes, right, with mm. wood, where you char wood to make it impenetrable to, mm. like, for, and so like this, so the termites won't get, you know, get to it, I forget the name of it, but it's a Japanese mm. process to treat exterior. So the sense of, like, sometimes when you have that char, like, that is so, like, final in mm. a way, too, mm. so the fact that it's final and then yet that you're moving it around, too, you're wrestling with it. Yeah. It's so powerful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is such a, you know, it's, it's interesting because it's a, in a sense, it's a violent process. Yeah. But everyone in here, as you know, the, the edges are soft and, you know, and everyone in here is so close to me. But yet it's a, a weird sort of, a, you know, there is a danger to it when working with it. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. as a memory or as a prayer mm -hmm. too. And mm -hmm. so that you were saying like one candle per drawing, you know, yeah. per drawing, like yeah. lighting a candle. So that, yeah. that also seems so powerful. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other, any other questions? Um, what are you, uh, are you planning to make more portraits? Or you, have you thought about uh, probably, uh, you know, I'll, I'll still make portraits, but I'm going to add other, uh, I'm going to add objects. You know, there's people, but there's, uh, you know, I'm going to add some different uh, objects and different, different materials that I'm working with. So there'll be some, some changes with it, yeah. But I think I'm still going to focus on portraits of people. When you do friends that you haven't seen in a while, are you doing it from memory or do you use a picture to remind I, yourself? Nah, I usually do it from memory. Because, uh, you know, it's funny, I have a hard time drawing from photos at times. Uh, uh, you know, the photo, I don't know, there's something more in the memory that I, you know, something in, the, in my memory is, uh, you know, I can, 
remember more of them. The, the picture just gives me a, I don't know, an outline. Yeah. So I usually try to work from memory as much as I can. Uh, let's see, one and uh, two, the one with the hand. Oh, yeah, and, third, the, 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 yeah, and the other one. There's a small one up there with, uh, yeah, the profile. Do they? You know, I would guarantee you they'd say they don't look like that. Okay. They would say it doesn't look like them. I think it looks like them, but uh, you know, people would look at that. A lot of people would look at some of those and say those don't look like me. But uh, you know, I, I don't think they would think that. But they, you know, it, it does to me. It's a, you know, it looks like them. It's how I remember them looking and being. So yeah. Yeah. So the element of it being really portrayed as my, I mean, as a memory. Yeah. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you, when you're when you're working with this with the smoke, do like other people sometimes arrive in the drawing the way that we see? You know, because this smoke has such a similarity to you know to clouds, right? Mm -hmm. The thing of seeing faces in clouds or seeing shapes in clouds mm -hmm. is that? Oh yeah. Your work Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Especially with this one. Uh -huh. I mean, the third guy up there looking towards us floated in. <laughs> you know, if you look at some of the, you know, some of the things outside there with the books, he's not in there. Uh, yeah, if you look out there, he's not in there, and he just kind of came along. Yeah, yeah. So they, they just, uh, you know, and, uh, and I was playing with the flame, and I really liked, you know, what was coming through. So I added him. And you know, I really don't know who that person is. You know, <laughs> and the other two I do. But I don't know who the other guy is. <laughs> well, someone's gonna tell you, right? That's yeah. Of things you were yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We we're talking about how uh, you know, even when I do some things, some people look at this, at some of these, and they see people that look familiar to them. I've had people say that. It's like, oh, well, that looks particularly that one. Oh, that looks like. Uh, my sister's daughter-in-law, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, that's my niece. But, <laughs> but some people will see, you know, familiarity to people that they know in some of these. To be an, to an artist who? Yeah, to like embracing this work and being able to come and show it and display it in this way. It was a long journey. I mean, I, it was a fragmented journey too. It started in 1985. Uh, and then, you know, I did other things, went through other things. And it's, you know, it was like uh, I took a very long time off, well, more like 30 years. And uh, I came back to it. Just because after doing all this, uh, all these other things, and after going to South Africa, I really wanted to really do art and you know show it. You know, so many times I do art and I wouldn't show it. You know, it was just something I would do, and that was it. But uh, that journey was just uh, over time, and after a long time, it was something I wanted to go back to art. You know, I wanted to go back and started doing it. And I realized I really needed to show it, you know, to more people, you know. I just think there are so many people in our community who engage in art, mm. like creating art, but they don't think of themselves in that way. And, you mm. know, sort of think they could display and show. So it's wonderful to hear that you can have it in there, mm. go away and come back to it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or anything? I don't want to cut short, but thank you, Charles, so much. And um, 
please enjoy the snacks. Please ask more questions and you know in person or <laughs> enjoy the show. Thank you. Thank you.